On this video, I'm going to try to show how I've been able to polish my GS1100 engine over the years on several different times that I've done it. Sometimes when I've had the engine, it's just sitting in a frame. And sometimes when I've had parts of the engine apart and some of the tools and some of the ways that I've been able to keep it better than new. So today we're going to do some polishing work on our GS1100E engine. It's a 1982. A lot of the polishing that we've done, we've done after removing the coating that comes on the engine parts. Both engines and forks have a coating of clear. It's like epoxy. You basically have to try to get that off any way you can. And I've used thousand grit paper. I've done many, many things to try to get it off, but compound usually won't take it off a buffing wheel usually won't take it off mother once you get that that coating off and you're in raw aluminum this little tool that i purchased at harbor freight and a can of mother's megan aluminum polish the tool is about 20 bucks the polish i again is about 10 so you're probably into this about 30 dollars this was donated by joe padula this insulator wax colonite and you need something once you get the aluminum polished you need to protect it or else it'll oxidize in a relatively short time you need some microfibers i found out in my case kirkland microfibers that you can buy off amazon are the best value they're the best quality and they ship them right to your house now starting off i would always start off with with a small part don't start with the biggest part on the engine and just once that part is starting to shine and you can see a, a polish wipe the polish off back and forth sometime you have to go back two three four times until you're satisfied with it and but the first thing you have to do is get that coating off now up at the valve cover area i've already done this once and had the valve cover off so it was easier to do that over on a buffing wheel but but you still have to touch it up like i'm doing right here or it oxidizes relatively quickly unless you constantly work on it and put polish it with a little bit of that mag polish and a little bit of that colonite wax keep it polished and i try to maintain this bike because to me this bike is an heirloom it's i'm never going to be able to buy another new one that's for sure and this one i think is a, a really nice example of a bike from this era my collection includes one bike from every 10 year period i've been involved in motorcycling and a lot of the a lot of the maintenance i do on it is just like what i'm doing right now it's just labor intensive and i enjoy shooting video of things that i've learned that make it easy as an example getting in all these little nooks and crannies and there's places your fingers can't go but what i've done in the past is take a paint stick and some colonite wax or some polish whatever and get it on a paint stick and use that to get in between the fins in the case of doing the front end in between the discs and the forks places that your fingers really don't fit and here's the stick it's an ordinary paint stick with a microfiber and there's places i can use it for to my advantage and that my fingers and i'm a pretty average size they don't fit in there so once you use this little tool and this little tool is so handy it's an air tool you need a relatively big compressor to use it uh, or you got to just wait in between while the compressor is building up. But that tool, because of its size and because at a 90 degree angle, allows you to get in places up around the carburetors, around the back, places you'd never get to go with a big buffing wheel. So I have found that to be trick one. That's why I wanted to start this video off with what I found to be one of several useful tools. That tool is worth its weight in gold. And what happens is you need a little buffing pad if you put a big one on, the tool really does enough power, at least my compressor doesn't, I shouldn't say the tool, to, to spin a big buffing pad. But the little one, you can get in all these little nooks and crannies, and boy, does that save a lot of time. Now, obviously, you could do the whole job by hand, and there's a lot of people that do. Back in the old days, I'm, I didn't have any of these tools, and we did everything by hand. But, but nowadays, at $20 tool, can just make this job a piece of cake that when you're done you'll really have something special and it won't be a big uh, a big expense either one way or the other there's that stick you can get in between the fins in between all the little between the spark plugs and everything and it is so handy 
and none of these things wind up costing you a lot of money a paint stick you can get for free at any paint store and it just works out that that is one of the more handy tools whether you have compound on it or wax or just you're wiping grease off it doesn't really matter the stick is a really really useful tool and it's one everybody should have if you're going to do now this kind of work see i'm on a wet driveway here when i should be inside the garage where it's carpeted but i can get down in between the exhaust pipes and in between the oil pan and get in places where your fingers really can't go and every time you use any of these air tools i put a drop or two of motor oil down into the into the inlet it just lubricates the bearing now another tool i have in my shop relatively inexpensive is the harbor freight buffer it's about $75, the pads are $5 each, and I always use the box to make a, a little like a fender so it minimizes the dust and the fly away from these tools. All of these little polishing tools that go in a drill press or that go in the, on the buffing wheels, they're all available from Harbor Freight. They're all relatively cheap. Now these parts, I, I like to do something, and this is whenever I have the bike taken apart. In this case, I was doing a valve adjustment. And so by combining a valve adjustment on a day that I'm going to have the whole bike taken apart like this, it, it's very easy to do all the polishing. Having that valve cover off is a relatively big job. There's a lot of screws and bolts, and I made a, a bolt map. I showed how to do that on a previous video. If you look up bolt map, and for obvious reasons, putting the bolts back in the right spot is important on a GS. But what's important on a GS2 is there's a lot of little nooks and crannies and angles. And in this case, I had the side cover off. 2,000 grit paper, soapy water, and a lot of compressed air to get it dry and get, get it clean, especially the valve cover. You don't want to leave anything in there. Now, the compounds that I use, the black is the roughest. That's usually where you would start. And you would go to the red compound, clean the wheel, rake the wheel. Put some wax and some red compound. When you're all done, there's the wax. And the final thing would always be the white compound. But there's other choices. And again, Harbor Freight sells 20 different kinds of compounds. I haven't found it necessary to get anything other than a red, white, and black. Getting it, getting it roughed out with the black, then going to the red and finalizing it with the white. Usually then I can go over to my drill press to do any little details where the bolts go say it just takes time and this is the kind of thing get a big cup of coffee get comfortable usually i would do this kind of work in the middle of the winter when it's cold or raining outside and it's a labor of love it's a lot of work and it's dirty work but when you're done holy mackerel is it nice now obviously what anybody can do take the parts off the bike Go down, look up in the, uh, the, on the internet, metal polishing, and go to a place and pay them to do this. I prefer to do it myself. That's the whole key to my involvement with motorcycling is I like to do the maintenance. Now, on this, and I've had the valve cover off several times for valve adjustments and whatever, but, but here's the thing with the valve cover. When I'm all done, it's got to be immaculately clean. I don't want to put a bunch of rubbing compound back down into the engine. So every step of the way, I've been trying to keep this clean. At the end of it, I'll flush it, clean it all with brake parts cleaner, blow it out with 150 pounds of compressed air. Make sure it's as clean, absolutely clean, before you bolt it back. And of course, needless to say, use a brand new gasket. Goes without saying. But this part of it, I found a lot of good little tips. 2,000 grit paper is a big help. A lot of parts of this, you can do with SOS pads. SOS pads work good, just as good, in fact. And, of course, you'll use a lot of them in the course of doing this. Pl plenty of blankets out on the, uh, the work table. Now, there's another trick that I learned on doing this that I think you can use for, not only for this part, but for a lot of parts. And they have little brushes and the stick with some paper towels. But the compressed air and brake part cleaner are the, the two best friends you have. And if you have a turkey pan big enough to dunk that in, just dunk it in with some some uh, diesel fuel that usually helps too but again none of this work is none of this work is a five minute job now what i do i have all kinds of uh, wheels and these are soft brass wheels that 
you want to run the uh, the drill press at a medium speed get in all those angles and corners and then polishing it out polish it out on the on the buffing wheel and one thing nice about buying a buffing wheel if you don't have one if you buy a buffing wheel and you invest the 7500 bucks whatever it's going to cost for all the supplies you'll you'll find things to buff out you'll find parts and in my case i like to every time i because of other maintenance have a part off the bike the bolts i polish all the bolts the the axles on the bike when you do a tire change this is a great tip take the part take the part this is my my workbench put a couple of sheetrock screws in to hold the part on a towel that'll keep it from getting scuffed up in any way now you can use this without having to hold it and you can see how nice now if you were trying to do this while the bike is in one piece you pretty much have to take the gas tank off pull the spark plug wires up it's a lot of work but because we have it off the bike and and that's the golden rule is anytime you have a part or a bolt or an axle or a uh, anything off of a bike polish it then just makes it a lot easier and of course when we're all done colonite wax the whole thing down all of this all of this buffing and polishing and clean it's a it's a true labor of love but for people that really appreciate it and what it does that's magic it makes keeping the bike clean so easy when you have a bike with flat black parts and you're cleaning them they it's not the same as when you have something polished you have something polished you can just wipe it with a rag with some detail wax and it's right back to being where it should be and I because I really want to keep the bike as nice as possible paying this price right up front on a day that I probably couldn't ride anyway because it's either raining or too cold I've invested a day just in this part and when it's back together it's going to be very easy to keep it like new or better now another tool I've used for many many years as well as the uh, the stick with the the microfiber on it is an electric drill the only problem with an electric drill because it's not a 90 degree bend it's a, it's a little more awkward to get in some spots with some of the different tools now not all of them and you can work around it and in the case of a GS taking a gas tank off makes this a lot easier but again labor is labor is labor and it just goes on forever when you want something nice it seems like there's always a price to pay and in my case I'm willing to pay the price now all of the little tools that hook on an electric drill everyone has a different use everyone can be used for getting between the fins around in the back and by the spark plugs and it's there's just no end to the little tools you can get I get them all at Harbor Freight and find them that they work perfectly good for my uses if you buy the more expensive ones at body shops I think if you were a professional and you're gonna do this every day of the week that might pay but I've bought ones at the body shop they don't seem to work any different maybe they last a little longer would be my only uh, thought on that but anyway the an electric drill again is another tool you can use and I wanted to show this as part of this video because I have worked to keep this engine as nice and clean I've worked to polish it to clean it to maintain it to make sure every part of it is maintained to the best of my ability and in the end now I've had the motorcycle 40 years it's got 77,000 miles on it and to me it's it's exactly what a brand new bike would be it is just as bulletproof gets good mileage it's comfortable and it is a beautiful fun bike to ride now one final thing once you get your engine buffed out and cleaned up and it's really really to your satisfaction then of course the colonite wax is a good protector but so is this product flitz flitz protects it they say for about six months now i made a dedicated video showing how to use flitz how i tested it to polish aluminum look up on my channel my name in quotation marks and the word flitz and the videos will come up or just search the channel search my channel with the word flitz flitz is a unique product you can get a small amount of it to check it out and see if you like it but on aluminum on raw aluminum now you can use it pretty much on anything but I have found the best use of all on my GS and my RD where there's a lot of aluminum parts I bought the big I guess it's a giant size can of flits and I've used it over and over on polishing and protecting and 
exhaust systems and just just every possible thing I could use it on. And it's been it's been really good. That big orange they call it the orange ball that hooks onto an electric drill. And if you can manage to get that into the spot where you want to buff, it is a super handy tool. But of course, this is my RD. Same thing. There's a lot of exposed aluminum. All these older bikes, and it's one of the reasons I love the older bikes. Now, in this case, what I'm doing is with a nail file, radiusing off the fins, because I wanted to polish the edges of the fins. But you can see the top part of the engine is reflecting my hand in it. And I took some pictures before and after to show how this played out. But, but the flitz, see, flitz is not polish. You don't take raw aluminum that's that's uh, and and polish it because it's six thousand grit. What you do is you buff everything out with Meguiar's, and then as the final thing, the final thing you use Flitz, and Flitz leaves that protection. And to me, that's a real important thing. Now I've used an, and I did not use it. I did not show it on the GS, but this little Dremel tool for getting in by the fins when you want to radius something off, or if there's a a little bit of rust or corrosion you can't get to. This is another super, super good little tool. And I got a, this tool is like a $15 tool at, at Harbor Freight. And I like the look of these older engines because I love these air-cooled engines. When the fins, the edges of the fins are polished and the little Dremel tool allows you to polish it without a lot of work. And then you can just go by with any of the buffing tools, the drill, or even better with the, uh, the air power the uh, one I showed in the beginning of the video, and, and then when you're all done. But once you get the shine that you're happy with, it, the flitz just is the final touch. It's the cherry on the Sunday. I've used it over and over and over, and it's never disappointed me yet. And I've ridden a bike in the rain where there'd be raindrops on everything, and one wipe of the rag, and it's clean. It doesn't, it doesn't let the aluminum get as corroded as if it was unprotected. Because if you don't protect the aluminum, anytime you polish aluminum, or even if you polish steel, or you've, you've got to protect it in some way. And there's a lot of ways to do that. There's a lot of ways you can do it, but the flitz is one of the ways that works pretty well for me. Now, I have, and in my case, I have a passion for these old motorcycles. And again, I've said it before in a video, I'm willing to pay the price to keep them looking brand new or better. So I hope some of the information on this video is usable, useful, or there's no part of it, there's no, and I try to tell people this all the time, there's no part of this that's high tech. That This is like mixing cement, it's simple. You learn a basic skill very quickly and you can use it over and over and over and you can wind up with a motorcycle that has a lot of beautiful polished parts on it. And it's not gonna cost you a lot of money either, just a lot of work and a lot of effort and and in the end, one thing you always wind up with, I always, when I go to a bike meetup or whatever, and somebody looks at the bike and they make a nice comment, I'm always very, very happy. And if you're new to the channel, we do try to post up something interesting every day, most of it concerning motorcycling, and most of it concerning older motorcycles, maintaining, painting, polishing, doing things that would keep them at least as good as a new bike and in in our case we try to make it even better than a new bike and in this case it's our evil twin our west cooley and stock evil twin gs we have two of them and the sharing the adventures we've had on our gs's is just just a big part of what i enjoy about having these old motorcycles so hopefully you did enjoy watching and share the video with your friends and we'll see you tomorrow